Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to design a metal logo using Adobe Photoshop and a display tablet. Quite a few of you have been asking in the comment section and in our Discord server whether it's worth investing in a display tablet for creating metal logos. And the short answer, in my opinion, is yes. Therefore, when Huyan reached out to me to review the Canvas Pro 13 2.5K display tablet, I thought the perfect way to do so would be to put the hardware to the test by creating a metal logo and a tutorial video on the process. Full disclosure, Huyan did send me this tablet to review, but it's not a sponsored video. And if you're only interested in the metal logo tutorial part of the video, feel free to jump to that timestamp there on screen. And with that, let's take a little look at the tablet and how we set it up. Right, so we see here the canvas comes in this nice box. You can see in the front it's 13 inch model, 2.5K resolution, which is 2560 by 1600 pixels. So when you open the box, you've got the tablet on the top. It's a very nice looking thing. Underneath the tablet, we've got the foldable stand, which is a nice brushed aluminum. Uh, it's always nice to have a stand. If you're like me, you don't like drawing flat on the table. So under the stand, there's these boxes. This box is gonna have your cables. There's all different connections for different types of computers. So having a look at the cables, the red ones are gonna be the power supplies. So for example, you plug this into a USB type one phone charger. Uh, to power the tablet. You've also got this USB Type-C, which I'm not gonna use. Uh, again, here is the Type-C power supply. Again, the red denotes that it's the power. As always, you get a little drawing glove like you did in the previous Canvas 13, but I never used them. So this is the three-in-one cable for the tablet. I'm gonna be using this one. It's got the HDMI cable, it's got power cable, and then regular information transfer USB type 1 there. On the other end, there is two USB type C connections which go into the left-hand side of the tablet. In this little box here, we have the stylus. This is Pentec 3.0. It is a battery-free pen with uh, up to 60 degrees tilt function and over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. In this little box, we've got the donut. The donut is just a stand for the pen and inside there is all your nibs. So the black ones are the regular nibs and I believe the new ones are like a felt type nib for like a different feeling maybe more like a marker and you just pop the pen in the donut like so so you can keep it on your desk out of the way so for comparison here is my canvas 13 pen and donut and as you can see they look exactly the same but I believe this is the Pentec 2.0 so it's not as good as the new one and in this little box here we've got a nice cleaning cloth which is always handy keep your screen clean and then there's the quick start guide instructions I don't really need them because I've, I've set one of these up before now to look at the tablet itself it's a nice solid machine it's one kilo I believe in weight and it's only a centimeter thick it really does feel like a nice piece of kit with that brushed aluminium back on it and it's got that anti-glare edged glass, which kind of gives it, you know, quite a paper-like feeling. I know this new monitor has reduced parallax as well, which means that the, the mouse point and the pen nib are going to be quite close to each other, which gives like a natural drawing sort of feeling. Here's a closer look at that nice brushed aluminium back on it. As I said, this thing feels like a tough cookie, you know. So here's my old Canvas 13 side by side, just for comparison. You can see that extra 10% vertical height on the panel itself means that the 13 Pro 2 2.5 is a little bit taller and the old one was a plastic backing which really does not feel as nice as the new piece so here we've got our again brushed aluminium stand i think there's three levels of tilt you can put on this which will suit pretty much anybody's preferences when drawing again there is the old stand it's um plastic and it it, it, it's a nice thing, but it just doesn't feel as sturdy as this new one. Quite an improvement. Now I've put the tablet on the new stand, and as you can see, it's very solid. It doesn't move when you touch it, which is great. So to set up, you're going to want to go to huyan.com and go into drivers here. And uh, just scroll down and find the tablet that you have. This is the Canvas Pro 13 2.5K. So we're going to click on that there. And I'm running a Windows 11 machine. So I'm just going to click Windows as operating system and click on drivers there. And you're just going to download that newest one and install. And then you should be good to go. After you've installed it, you can just plug in your cables into the machine. As you can see, I'm using the three in one cable here. I've got it plugged into my laptop, which is an MSI Leopard here in the studio. After you've got everything plugged in, you just click the button 
on the top the start button and it should come to life and honestly there was like no messing around with this it just worked straight away and instantly you can see the quality of this 2.5k resolution monitor like so crisp and tidy my camera does not do it justice so once you have your driver installed and your tablet plugged in you can go into the Huion app so on the pen display panel I'm going to click on press key this is going to be the seven hotkey buttons on the left hand side of the tablet which is pretty sweet you can assign your most used um, keys to these little buttons I actually prefer using a keyboard but I know a lot of people do find these very very handy so you just click on one of these little buttons in press key on the app and you can just type in what keystroke you want to assign to that particular button for example here we're going to say shift and D which is deselect I use it all the time now when you click on working area you're just going to make sure that that lines up with the tablet itself you don't want the display of your laptop you can see my OBS running there on my laptop monitor but I've made sure that this is the tablet. Then we go into monitor calibration and with your pen, you're just gonna click on these little bullseye things and as close to the red dots as possible. This is gonna calibrate the screen and the stylus together so there is the minimal amount of distance between the mouse point and the tip of the pen. Then we can go into the pen. I've got quite a light touch, so I like to put it on soft. So this is how much pressure you're going to want yourself like to put on the pen like if you're a heavy drawer you can put it down on hard but as i said i've i've got a light touch so i'm just going for soft there pretty much just play around and see what you prefer then we click on the pen and in here as i said these two buttons on the pen stylus itself i just have them on a right click and space bar because i like to kind of pan around the artboard with the pen itself it, it just feels really natural now you can also hold down the power button and you're going to get this little window pop up you can change the brightness of the screen you can select your different rgb presets from srgb to native to adobe rgb i figure since i work in adobe like all the time i'm just going to click on Adobe RGB. Now that it's pretty much all set up, I'm, I'm just kind of going into Photoshop here and just playing around with the pen and detailing up this piece to kind of see how it feels. And straight away, there is a notable improvement on the older canvas. This is a big artboard. I think it's like 5,000 by 5,000 pixels and there is like no delay. You can see there when I'm drawing, it's, it's completely fluid, it's awesome. And as I said, there's over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity in the nib. I don't really know what that means, but all I do know is that it feels really good and really sensitive when you're working. Here I'm just giving a little like crash test in our favorite lasso tool just to see how it feels. And again, you can kind of see just how smooth it is. That textured anti-glare screen feels really good. Like almost like a heavy GSM sort of piece of card. I haven't tried the felt nibs and um, maybe I should have, but I figured I'm used to these black nibs on them. So I just left it in. And as I said, I've got a light touch. I haven't gone through a single one of these nibs since I got the, the Canvas 13 years and years ago, maybe in 2020. And they give you like 10 different nibs in the, the little donuts. So you're gonna be covered for a very long time, even if you're heavy handed. Playing around detailing logos here. I'm also using the True Grit Texture Supply stipple brush and everything just feels really good, really natural, really quick. So already I've got high hopes for this and um, I'm delighted to, to give it a test spin. Now to really give the tablet a baptism of fire, I decided I want to make a nasty old school death metal hardcore style logo. Off camera I laid out the kind of flow of the logo and the letters I want to use. I used an awesome old English style font that I got on Invado Elements called Cambridge. Thank you to Invado, you can get 70% off your first month if you want to try it for peanuts. The link is in the description. And yeah, so I just kind of chopped up the letters, laid them out here, got a little bit of symmetry going, a bit of flow. And to start off, I'm gonna take my base layer, reduce the opacity to about 50, and then make a new layer above it. And I'm gonna go into our brush tool here and get a nice hard, round, pressure sensitive brush and uh, just start kind of like feathering in some lines here. I think this is about 4,000 pixel artboard. So I've got my brush size at about 13 pixels. You can see there I'm panning around the artboard using the bottom button, which I've assigned as spacebar, which is, it just feels really natural. It's almost like, you know, using an iPad or something. Now I've just started drawing in, kind of feathering in how I want this to be. I'm taking care to really elongate the ascenders and you know, the serifs and stuff here. Um, just to accentuate how big it is, you can see there I'm using R, which is rotate, just to get better angle to draw on the artboard. You can just spin the artboard around um, until it's at like a comfortable angle for you. So you can see I'm actually going quite rough here with the lines. I'm not being, 
you know, Peter Perfect here. Because once this is all like drawn in and happy, we're just gonna fill it with black, which is like a really nice, quick kind of trick. Feeling out the shape of the logo, making it real nasty and sort of old school looking, damaged as always, because let's face it, we love this aesthetic. Our first impressions is, as I was drawing this, it just felt like really good. As I said, a notable improvement on the original Canvas 13. This one is just a lot quicker. A lot snappier, a lot more fluid. So now you can see as I'm like drawing through the uh, the letters here, I'm just going in and taking my eraser and rubbing out bits. Just because I want to be able to grab the magic wand tool and make full selections of these letters when I have them like fully drawn out. It's important as you go to keep an eye on your letters uh, because you want all the damage and the spikes to be the same like intensity level on each letter in the logo. Don't know if you watched my podcast with Kai Blackwell, but that's something we touched on. You want each letter in a logo to look like it's part of the same alphabet, unless you're going for something like completely left field and, and bonkers. And that's okay too, you know, you can do what you want, but just uh, a good rule of thumb is to, to keep an eye as you go and make sure everything sort of like feels part of the same family. Here I'm using the free lasso tool just to make a selection of that L. I've copied and pasted it. You can copy by pressing Control C and paste by Control V. Now I'm just sort of dragging it down so it aligns with the original L and then I go into transform and then flip horizontal and now we just drag it over to the other side because I want to build the D out of this uh, part of the L. As you can see it's very nice to use this pen as a mouse also, not just for drawing, like it is a really intuitive way to use Photoshop. You know like a display tablet is also super handy for photo bashing and stuff like instead of just using the pen tool you can use the, the stylus to make selections of things and cut stuff out and feather in shadows and, and colors like it's it's a really good time saver. Now that I've drawn the uh, the capital D at the end there and have it looking nice I just merge all of these guys onto one layer take our eraser you can get that by pressing E on your keyboard and I'm just rubbing out bits that I've sort of overlapped or left little mistakes in. Now I've gone into liquify to sort of work some of the kinks out of these spikes and make them look a little bit more natural or a little bit more nasty. And again, this pen is super responsive. I think liquify can be kind of laggy, but I didn't find any of that here. After I was happy with that, I grab our magic wand tool and I'm going in and making a selection of all of the internal parts of the letters here. Then I make a new layer and I press shift and F5. That brings up fill. I'm just selecting black and filling the whole letters with black. And you can see how quickly that just brings the whole logo to life. It's like super solid now. After that, I make a new layer. And with the same 13 pixel width brush tool, I'm just going to start drawing in a nice panel outline. I'm taking care to try keep the same amount of distance from each spike and slick of each letter. You know, I want this to sort of look like a big slab. It doesn't have to be completely perfect, but it is nice to sort of give each letter the same amount of breathing space in the negative space. So jumping over over to some screen capture here and um, you can see now I'm just drawing in some cracks and different like drips within this sort of back panel here I want this to look like the logo is etched on a big like piece of rock or concrete or something as I go through it I don't really want to go overboard here but I do want to make this nice and busy and sort of fill balanced areas across the whole logo after I was thinking that was looking pretty nice I take our filled layer and uh, just put like an inner white stroke on it of like two or three pixels to see how it sort of looks. And that straight away gives it a little bit more of a 3D feeling, which is cool. After that, I go back to our detailing layer and I start drawing in some big horrible drips coming off the bottom of the logo. Again, the uh, pressure sensitivity on this tablet is really nice for it because you can get like nice gloopy looking horrible, you know, liquid sort of feeling drips quite easily with it. Next, I make a new layer that I just call spikes. And with that small five pixel brush, I'm just putting extra bits on the edge of the spikes to make them look a little bit more sharp and a little bit more aggressive. Now I make a selection of all of our layers and I press Control T, hold shift and just sort of drag it down a bit because I think it was a little too tall. I want it to be a little bit more horizontal if you get me. I then duplicate both of our letter layers and then just, you know, nudge them a little bit up to give it a 3D effect. And I rinse and repeat on the uh, the slab part as well. When I was happy with how this was looking, I then grab our top layer and with the magic wand tool, I'm just going in and making a selection of all of the internal black parts. I press Control C and Control V to copy and paste it. And then I'm taking one of our Xerox textures here, which you can get in the Spearhead goodie bag. The link is in the description. And I lay it over the top of the letters and make sure it lines up nicely, covering every part. Then by pressing Control and clicking on the thumbnail of the layer below, it makes a selection of the letters. I can then press Control C and Control V, and that'll copy and paste only a selection of the grit in the shape of the letters. I then grab our grit layer below 
and by pressing control and I, you can invert it. Then do the same thing. I line it up along with this like slab on the bottom, making sure it covers all parts. Then by pressing control and clicking on the thumbnail of that slab layer, I copy and paste just the selection of the grid. We can then go into our brightness and contrast and you know, just whack the contrast uploads to make it look a little bit harsher and a little bit clearer. After that, I can take our spearhead grit, which is also in the spearhead goodie bag, laying that over the top. I've copied and pasted it like three times, so it covers most of the logo equally. I really want to accentuate the damaged feeling and go overboard with the texturing. It's my favorite thing to do. I merge all of our grit layers together and then by pressing Control and E, you can select the eraser. And again, I'm just gonna brush around the edges you can see here that I wanna leave a good bit of the grit like over the edges to kind of provide a little bit more visual interest. I then reduce the size of the eraser and, and go in and just go a little bit tighter to the edge and take some of the bigger splats away. I then make a selection of our grit layer by pressing control and clicking on the thumbnail. Then you can go into select and into refine edge. All I do then is kind of bring the smoothness up uh, the contrast up a lot, the feather a little bit, and then like bring the edge down. And that'll create sort of a cleaner selection. And with that new refine edge selection, I make a new layer and press shift and F5 and fill it with black. As you can see, it takes away a lot of the smallest grit parts and just kind of leaves like a cleaner, more defined layer of grit. Now that our texturing is done, I'm gonna basically save this file and I merge everything onto one layer. Open, liquefy again. And I'm going in here, you can see I'm just sort of pulling down some of the drips, making them look like a little bit more dramatic, more horrible. And again, going into our spikes and just playing around with some of them, kind of making a few bits sharper and with a much larger brush selected. I'm then nudging around some of the letters and different parts of the logo to create a little bit more flow. And with everything merged on the one layer, I go in and I do our Xerox trick. But this time I have both regular and enlarged grain selected and I play around with the values until it's looking nice and sandwiched together. Then with our magic wand tool, I make a selection of the outside part of the logo and press delete. And then with our white background layer, I just just invert that to black by pressing control and I. Then I invert our logo just to see how it will look with white letters on a black slab background. And I thought that was looking badass as well. And with that, we are pretty much done with this disgusting, gritty, over the top, old school death metal logo. And I'm delighted. So there we go. I'm actually really happy both with how this logo turned out and how the tablet felt while creating it. That 2.5K resolution screen is absolutely delish. And the combination of that like anti-glare etched glass and the Pentec 3.0 stylus made for such a fluid and comfortable drawing experience. It's just like drawn on paper really. All in all, a massive quality of life improvement on the older Canvas 13. Like I loved that thing, I used it for years, but this is no joke better in pretty much every way. So if you're in the market for a display tablet, you know, that's gonna elevate your logo game to the next level, it's not gonna break the bank and the hardware is like really, really good stuff. And I can confidently recommend this thing. It's absolutely lovely. As always, if you've got any questions about the logo design or anything else in the video, like just shoot in the comments, I'll be more than happy to get back to you. And if you found anything in the video valuable, like please give me a little like, a subscribe, share it with your mates, you know. That is honestly the best way you can support the channel and it goes a really long way to helping me continue make these videos for you guys. So if you made it to the end, much love, peace out, and I'm gonna catch you soon in the next one. Oh,